Okay. So today, as it says, is a super basic overview of more than REST. I'm going to go over API structure, arch architectures and protocols that maybe we don't see every day because uh, REST has taken over the world. Uh, but in enterprise applications that I usually work with, we, are, we see a lot of SOAP and we see a lot of RPC and we're starting to see a lot of more of GraphQL APIs. Um, not everything is, can go through REST and not everything regulation-wise can go through REST as well. So that's why we see some of these. So why am I talking about this? Um, let me find how to go to the next slide. I went too far. I haven't talked for a while. Anyway, why am I, where is my mouse? It, oh my gosh. <laughs> There it goes, okay. Why am I talking about this? I'm Michelle, I'm a VP of HubSpot Architecture at BridgeRev. We are a marketing HubSpot agency in Bricktown. We work with enterprise level businesses all over the world to streamline their systems to make more money. Um, so basically, I'm a professional Googler. I don't know it, I find it up. My job is basically for me to go learn the things and be able to tell people about it. Um, I also have a second job, I'm a race timer. It's race season, so um, you're going to see me around the OKC if you're also like run 5Ks and stuff. I go out, I time, and it's a rush to deal with that much data all at once live. Um, <laughs> and then I'm also a dog mom and a recovered World of Warcraft addict. <laughs> I will never go back because it will suck me in. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go over some RPC, SOAP, GraphQL, and choosing the right PC, right API for your project. Um, so kind of a brief history of APIs. Bruce J. Nelson, he is credited with like coming up with the remote procedure call, but it wasn't actually put into practice till 1982 uh, by Brian Rendell for a Newcastle connection between Unix machines, like 82 before I was born. Um, in 1998, Microsoft comes up with SOAP as a way to exchange data over the internet. Um, 2000, Roy Fielding created REST, which we mostly use, um, as a PhD dissertation at the University of California. And then 2012, New Kid on the Block, that's 10 years old now, is GraphQL. Facebook built it because they have so much data for their algorithm that REST was just too slow. So they created something new. So remote procedure call, RPC, the grandfather of APIs. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It instead of facilitating the transfer of data, like REST and SOAP does, RPC calls execute scripts on another server. So your call is, goes to a different server and a different computer to make that computer do a thing. Um, so with RPC APIs, they're usually formatted in JSON or XML. And XML is more secure, but they're pretty much the same when you're making it happen. My notes are, I'm fighting with this. All right, so there are some advantages to it. It is easy to integrate with your internal systems and applications. It's efficient communication between the client server. You could do a whole lot at once with it. Like, it's mainly used for distributed networking and systems, so. Um, a lot of times it's used for, what is it, enterprise management systems of where like they're managing your computer. That's what that does. If your corporate office is telling your computer to update, that's usually an RPC call. Um, and it does support synchronous and asynchronous stuff, so it can call, wait, or just, you know, asynchronous. And then it can support different transport port protocols and formats, so it can go over like TCP and HTTP, TP, I would really love if I can get to my notes. All right, my notes. All right, so. So anyway, and then the not cool parts about RPC is it's limited in security and capabilities. You're not transferring your data anywhere, and it's very strict. It's also typed. You could only do exactly what it says, and it's got a specific format. Like, it's not like JavaScript. You can't write spaghetti code. It has to be very specific. 
And it's also difficult to debug a test because it will run and it will not give you any errors, so you don't know if your thing happened or not. All right, and then moving on, SOAP is the next one. SOAP has been expanded on RPC, so they took that basics, made SOAP in 1998. It's called Simple Access Protocol. If anyone ever works with any Salesforce APIs or Sage Intact, that's SOAP because uh, SOAP was, you know, transmitting data across networks and it's also to build APIs. It is owned by, it's been standardized by W3C and it uses XML to code, encode information. It strictly defines how the message has got to be sent and what must be included with them. So that also makes SOAP way more secure than REST because it has built-in error handling and security mechanisms. It is the choice API when you're dealing with financial institutions and government entities. Um, it can operate over many protocols and it allows for almost any programming model. And then the not cool parts is it also has rigid guidelines like RPC. It can be very code heavy and hard to implement. So it, to make things happen, you gotta write a lot of code. And it is a little bit harder to get the data out of than other APIs. So, right, new kid on the block, GraphQL. Uh, I'm a fan. GraphQL makes data more accessible regardless of where it's stored. It is open source now and is now managed by the GraphQL Foundation because it's no longer in the hands of Facebook. It is a querying language and does data manipulation for a runtime engine. So, the good thing about GraphQL, it returns just the data that you want. Uh, in REST, you sometimes have to do a whole bunch of different calls to get the data that you need, like call the contacts, get the contact ID, then call associations, then go find the emails that they sent. With REST, that's one call. It returns just what you need, and that's it. Uh, and the good thing about it, it is no request is too big or too small. Right, so with GraphQL, we could integrate multiple systems behind a GraphQL layer. So you could use GraphQL to marry a whole bunch of APIs together and then find the information from, from those APIs through a GraphQL layer. Um, so it is also faster, and it's good for complex systems and microservices. It is strongly typed, which can be a good thing or a bad thing if you're on the TypeScript versus JavaScript debate. Um, tightly script can be good. Um, and you don't always have to have the latest version installed. Like, it will work with old GraphQL versus new GraphQL. And then some not cool parts because even though I am a fan of it, there are things that your calls can get huge. They can be complicated because they're like nesting and arrays and all the fun stuff that comes with them. Um, and it also can be complicated to implement because it doesn't complicated to implement a cache because it doesn't cache very well because it runs on information right now. And then that also makes it hard to specify rate limits so your API can just get bombarded and it's hard to make it say, hold on. All right. So then choosing the right API architecture. It depends. I say that a whole lot in my job. What are you trying to accomplish? What are your business needs? What are your technical needs? I stole this graphic straight from the MuleSoft website. MuleSoft is a great in integration building tool. Um, so it depends. What are you trying to do with it? And then when you're trying to decide which API structure you should build, um, it's like comparing apples and oranges and bananas. So the best thing to kind of do is like break it up into four things. What is my business need? What are the technical needs? What kind of talent is out there to do it? And what kind of regulations do I have to follow for this? Like I said, uh, government is very regulated. Financial industries are very regulated. So sometimes those are very key. Um, then we have other things like in your business needs, like what are you using it for? What are your customers are using for? How fast do you have to make it? If you're in a startup, your go-to-market strategy is very important. If it's going to take you two years to build your product before you get uh, your first paying customer, that they're, not, they're going to use a different system, straight up. And so 
and then technical, um, consistency, simplicity, security, scalability, performance, and complexity. Those are like a thing that you just memorize when you're becoming like an architect of trying to figure out what we need. And then, of course, developer adoption. Um, as GraphQL gets more adopted, so you're going to see that a lot more. Um, and which is also why SOAP remains popular like 25 years later, is because there is a whole resource, a whole lot of people know how to use it. And there's a whole lot of resources to teach you how to use it. All right, and then there are way more than the four no API architectures I talked about. Like more than those four, there's like Falcon and Web something and other. There's a whole lot of them. Um, so I encourage you to go go on a Google rabbit hole like I did. This is why I did this. Um, but Today we learned about RPC, you do things on remote servers, SOAP, transfer secure data with any other system, and GraphQL is performative, precise data retrieval. And that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs>